Hello again, this is Jim Kibler from Kibler's Long Rifles and this is a continuation of the series of assembling our colonial rifle kit. Um, if you recall last time we basically prepared the stock for staining and finishing or carving if you would choose to carve it and uh, now we're going to move on to uh, uh, preparing the surfaces of the metal parts. Uh, the metal parts are are generally um, fairly finely finished, but they do require a little bit more work um, in order to, to produce a, a good quality firearm, a nice quality long rifle. So that's what we're gonna uh, put our attention to. And the first uh, task we're gonna work on is filing the butt plate. Um, you have a couple options with the butt plate. Here's what the butt plate looks like, of course, as cast. And uh, if you recall, we did all the assembly work prior to finishing any parts. And that is what I would definitely recommend. You don't want to uh, polish any parts down and then assemble the rifle. You want to do it in the opposite order. Assemble the rifle, finish parts last. Um, so in order to, to finish the parts, we have to file and then use some abrasive paper, stones, or a combination um, in order to get the surface much finer. Uh, the butt plate, we, one thing we have to consider is how to hold parts when we're, when we're polishing them, which can be a little bit tricky. We have the option where we can actually just uh, polish the butt plate right on the stock. So squeeze the stock in the vise and uh, you know, then polish the butt plate. It can, it can work fine. I've done that lots of times. The only uh, kind of thing to note with that is it can be a little cumbersome, cumbersome to manipulate the stock. So an op option is to just take a piece of two before or whatever material you have and cut it out to the shape of the, the butt plate. Then you can use some small screws to go in the, the holes and attach it to the, the block of wood. Now you don't want to squeeze down real hard with these screws and you want to have bearing uh, where you're pulling your screws down. Otherwise, when you tighten your screws, it could kind of distort the butt plate, which you don't want to do. If you distort the butt plate, then you know it's not going to fit your stock when you try to put it back on. Um, so just be, take a little care in this process, and I think that you'll find this to be pretty easy uh, to a pretty pro easy process to use, and helps out a lot with the finishing process. So the, basically, we'll, we'll start from the worst areas and work work uh, towards finer operations. So the worst areas are these gates. So these gates have a little bit of metal protruding. Um, we do grind these off in the kits, but there is a little bit above the surface. So we're going to uh, cut those off first. Sorry about the dog barking once again. Relax. Okay, so we'll clamp the butt plate in the, in the vise. And we're gonna get a file and start going after this. So the gates are pretty coarse, and we're going to start with a pretty coarse file, so we'll try this one and see how it works. You can use a little coarser file for this, but it'll, it won't be too bad. We don't have too much material to remove. We're getting there. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. That gate is is all removed. So now we're going to move up to this this gate up top, the remnants of the gate up top. So we're going to do the same thing, blend it into the shape of the shape of the the butt plate. Now I will note also, it's probably a good idea to use file handles. I. Uh, I get in the habit of using file, files without handles, but it is a little more comfortable if you, if you do have a, a file handle and a little safer so you, you don't end up poking yourself with the tang. So we'll go ahead and put a handle on this one. Okay. 
So that's pretty good too. So again, we've kind of shaped it so it matches the shape of the shape of the butt plate. So now we're gonna basically lightly file the whole surface. Now there, at the parting line, the parting line is where sort of a, a witness line on the casting that's a result of the manufacturing process. And in the case of the butt plate, it goes down the center. So there may be a, a little bit of a, a mismatch or, or line there. So we'll give that a little more attention, um, attention next. Now one thing to consider when you're filing is the file that you choose to use. There's kind of a compromise where if you use a coarser file, it'll cut down the material faster, but then you have coarser file marks to remove. Um, and if you use a finer file, you know, just, it'll just be the opposite. It'll take you longer to file, but you'll have, uh, you won't have put coarser marks in the part. So it's a bit of a compromise. Uh, we'll try a little finer file here to see how it goes. And we may go back to the coarser file as well, but I'll pick a little finer file here and see what happens. So I'm gonna hit the, the parting line down the center. Okay. I don't know if you can tell, but the way I'm using a file is I'm not pushing straight across. The file is kind of sliding along at an angle as I'm pushing it. That's a very, very common uh, approach to filing. Um, when you're using a file on a relatively big surface, it's really important to use it that way because if you were just to go across it, Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of cut grooves in it and it's not gonna be near as uniform. So always slide the file along if you can. Now this file's working okay, but I think I'm gonna try the one I used previously and see how it works too. Because it doesn't look like it's very much different than that file that I picked up. Now what I'm, I've started to remove that parting line. Now what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna start going in the other direction. And I can see there's a little lump where that gate was too, so I'm gonna hit that a little bit more. So as I'm filing, I'm kind of being mindful of the shape of the part. So the cross filing helps, helps you get a nice shape. And not end up with waves and grooves. I try to work a bigger area at once, not focus on any particular little small areas, or again, you'll end up with valleys and so forth, which you don't want. Hit this gate a little more because it looks a little high where that, that gate was. It still looks a little high to me. So I'm trying to read the surface as I'm filing. This takes a little practice, but I guess everything does. Hit that parting line just a little more. If you notice, this has a slight concavity to the part, but I'm still using the, the flat side of the file. For a gentle sweep, you can get away with that and it works okay. And I've already filed up close to the, the box, uh, the dovetail for the box lid, so I'm not gonna do much there. It's already been cleaned up when I fit the box lid to the, the butt plate. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. A little bit of that parting line still left, so I'm gonna give it a little, a little more attention. You don't wanna be able to see any, any of the parting line. Now also note that when you're filing around screw holes, be a little careful because you can easily wallow the screw hole out. And that means kind of the material will kind of dive down towards the screw hole. So be mindful of that. You don't want that to happen. So when you're filing along screw holes, kind of go around them and not right over top of them maybe. So you don't have a big, wallow around them. Okay, so that's looking pretty good for the, the majority of it. We'll hit the, the bottom here a little bit. It kind of tapers up. It's typically what these, this style of butt plate will do. It'll taper up from the bottom and form a bit of an arc. 
and it's not super pronounced, but it does form a bit of an arc. And the toe up, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna move our attention up the butt plate towards the comb, up at the heel and towards the comb. Okay, we can move it in the vise a little bit to help us. And this file is plenty coarse, probably a little coarser than I would prefer because it's gonna take just a little more work to get those file marks out, but it's not bad. So we're gonna, we're gonna live with how it is and proceed. I'm gonna move this a little bit. This vise, I can swivel things around and move them around and it'll help me out a bit. So with the half round file, you can alternate between the flat side and the round side if you should need it. Some areas of the round side works a little better, some areas the flat side works a little better. And this is about an eight or 10 inch file, I'm not sure. Um, one thing that uh, is good is to use the largest size tool that's comfortable for any particular operation. Sometimes the tendency with uh, beginners is to use a very small tool, you know, like a little needle file or something to try to smooth surfaces up because they feel it's safer. And in a way it may be, but um, it takes forever. Um, and you won't get as good of results either. So use a, start with as big a tool as you can and then work down in size in the areas where you need a little smaller tool. Working up around the heel. And I still see a little, little remnant, a little shadow of that parting line. So I'm gonna try to hit it just a little more. I don't wanna see that one when I'm done. And I'm cross-filing a little bit, which keeps you from having any wallows and swales, or at least helps, helps minimize the chances of that. Okay, that's looking, looking pretty decent. Now we're going to move our attention, device here a little bit, move our attention up to the comb. These nice flat surfaces of the comb, the facets, you want to maintain those nice flat surfaces. And a good tool to use, steal this file handle, is a mill file, which is just a, a basically a flat file, single cut, meaning that it just has teeth cut in one direction, no crossing pattern. Uh, very common files. Let's see if this file handle will stick, I don't think it will. So it's a very common file and it leaves a, a pretty nice smooth finish. So let's go ahead and start working on these facets up top. <laughs> this dumb doll here, you relax, shush. Look up against our moldings, being careful not to mess them up. Again, I'm cross-filing as I'm filing. Filing process takes time and patience, but it's just uh, what is required to make a, a nice rifle. So we've got that flat done. That flat done. Again, moving my light so I can see what I'm doing.
Okay, looking pretty good. So you can see the mill file leaves a little finer finish than the file we used on the on the uh, rest of the, the butt plate, which is kind of nice. And we can use the mill file in some areas down here if we should want. It'll take out some of those coarser file marks in the previous operation, which isn't a bad idea. Now, it'll have its limitations when it starts getting up in the radius, but we can get some of it here with the mill file. how this is coming through on camera, but it's working pretty good. You can also just start with coarser, coarser abrasives uh, if, you, if you use a little coarser file to start with. So by abrasives, I mean abrasive paper primarily. So this is looking pretty good now. There's no files helping out. So even though it's a flat file, again, we're able to get up in this radius pretty decent with it. And if I file perpendicular to the previous file marks, I can kind of see where they're, how they're coming out. It's just looking, looking good. Okay. So that's enough of that for now. I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the moldings up front. So we have a particular shape, you can see, a profile, which we call a molding. And it may not be completely clear right now, but there's two beads and then a sort of a radius, a bit of a bull nose between the two beads. So we need to file that and uh, clean it up a little bit. So. We're going to use a needle file, which is a, this is kind of a long needle file, but it's nice. It's uh, just a smaller file. This is three quarter, or excuse me, three cornered, triangular and cross section. So we can come in these in here and get rid of any parting lines. And and kind of restore the shape of this a little bit because we did slide over it when we were filing the comb flush with the, the butt plate, when we installed the butt plate. Okay, so that's looking real nice. I'm gonna kind of turn this a little bit to do this side. I know this isn't necessarily a, an exciting video or the an exciting process but it's just a large part of gun building okay whoops define those lines just a bit more now it won't hurt to hit those beads we talked about the beads that were on either side of that bull nose in the middle, or radius in the middle. So I'm gonna lightly hit those. If your eyes aren't very good, it, it's uh, not a bad idea to use magnification, which I, my eyes are not what they used to be, so I'm struggling a little bit here, but I can get it done. So we'll go to magnification here probably at some point. By magnification, I just refer to optivisors, which are little headband magnifiers. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I see a little spot I missed on that flat, so I'm gonna hit that. Okay, let me have a little bit here. So we're gonna blend these flats into the, into the heel. Okay. That's filed. Pretty decent. Some file marks in it, of course. We could go to a smaller file or a, a finer file, which isn't a bad way to do do the job. Um, that way, we use very little abrasive paper, or we can use coarser grits of abrasive paper 
and more abrasive paper and uh, you know eliminate the, the finer filing. We'll demonstrate a little finer filing. This, this file here is a bit finer. One of the problems with fine files is they can tend to clog a lot. So it's sort of a balance, you know. So let's just see what it does. And it's not too much, I can see it's not too much finer finish than the mill file left. I do have some finer files, but I don't think I have them pulled out right now. They may be in this drawer, let's see. If not, we'll just go straight to abrasive paper and see how we fare with that. Let's just go to the abrasive paper. So something like this, like a 150 grit paper would be a good place to start, I think. And pull a chunk of it off. I've always been in the habit of just wrapping paper around a, a file. I think it's probably a little better practice to use uh, maybe a stick back with leather because the leather gives a little bit and you end up having a, you get a little better bearing, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, and your paper seems to wear a little more evenly. Um, here's sort of a block that has a little piece of rubber attached to it. So we could try that too and see how it works out. Let's try this half round file first. So let's get in here and start working it down a little bit. You can see it's evening things out. Get rid of the scratches. And if you get, go back and forth, cross, go kind of alternate directions of your abrasive, you can see when you have the previous grit scratches out. So this is cutting pretty nice. And the paper goes dull, so you have to get more, which is perfectly acceptable. Don't try to use dull paper, it'll take forever. Some scratches there, I see. Okay, so you continue this process. This is 150 grit, so we'll continue with this process until I turn the file so it'll get a little bit more bearing on up in here with the radius it's a little tighter. Continue this process until you get it all, the whole, the whole butt plate worked down to this grit, which I'm gonna go ahead and stop right now and I'll bring you back when it's all worked down to this grit because we don't want this video to be too awful long. Okay, I'm back with you. I've uh, sanded the butt plate down to uh, 150 grit the whole thing. Then I went to 220 grit the whole thing, and then I went up to 320 grit covering the whole thing. And I suppose the process took maybe 20 minutes, 15 minutes, I'm not sure. Um, but it doesn't take too long. The progressive grits go a little bit faster with each grit. Um, one note, or uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about quality or um, level of finish. Um, in this case, I got a pretty good finish so far. I didn't worry about taking out every scratch from the previous grit. Um, you could, you, when you cross sand, you can uh, take out all the scratches in the previous grit and end up with, with what would seem like a, a perfect finish. Um, now, there's a few things to note is that a finer, as I mentioned with the, the stock finishing, a finer finish isn't always a better finish. Um, if we compare this to original work, original 18th century work, it's common to see file marks. Um, it's common to see uh, coarse abrasive marks. So a coarser finish isn't a bad thing. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, shoddy work or sloppy work. It can look good. Um, I know this is probably a foreign uh, kind of thought or subject to some people, but um, it's one that's real important to, to, to mention. Um, there's a difference between uh, shoddy work and doing things in a workmanlike manner. Um, best way I can explain it. People, some people like to finish the uh, butt plates down to the different, uh, different finenesses or different degrees of polish. My preference is usually to go up to about 320 grit, maybe 400 grit, somewhere in that range and then use some uh, Scotch-Brite or loose abrasives just to give it a little bit more shine um, and even things out a little bit more. Um, sometimes <clears throat> beginners really focus a lot on a high polish, 
like a buff polish. And, uh, you know, everybody likes what they like, but it's something that's usually, for those with more experience, we kind of look at that, and it's, it's not necessarily something that looks good to our eye, generally. Um, and it's not really representative of the, the original guns, either. So, um, just a comment on that. And along those lines, if you notice, we've used files and abrasive paper, and um, we haven't used a buffer. Um, ten, the temptation might be to kind of just use uh, power equipment to do this job, and you'll end up with a mess. Uh, it won't follow the shape of the part, and it'll round off edges, and it'll look really bad. So don't use power equipment to, to try to polish up your hardware. Okay, now one area that I haven't addressed is this little bead up front here. I filed it, but I didn't polish it any further after that. So this bead, I'm going to go ahead and polish a little bit more, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to use to accomplish the task. So stones can be real effective in polishing. Um, I'd and by stones, I mean abrasive stones. And I'd recommend softer ones that break down. These are available from companies like Congress. Um, there's one that I use. And there's another uh, a big company, but it escapes my mind right now. But use the softer varieties. They come in different sizes. Here's a little... I believe about an eighth inch size. It's 320 grit, which should work pretty good. And this happens to be a super soft variety. You use these in conjunction typically with uh, some kind of lubricant. This is their stoning oil they sell. You can just kind of dip it in there. Nice thing about these is they break down fast and they conform to the shape of your part. For things like beads, they work very, very well. You could wrap a brace of paper around a little needle file and get in there, but this is just a nicer and easier way to do it. So it's, it starts with a, a square cross section, but by the time I'm done doing this bead, it'll probably, probably be shaped with a bit of a radius. So we can get in here, dip it in the oil, and we can work it in here and, whoops. This light's sort of getting in my way here. Let me slide it out of the way. It leaves a nice finish. And if you can see, I don't know if it'll pick up, but it's already formed a little bit of a concavity in the, in the surface of the stone. So it's a good thing. And because of that fact, it's, it's pretty hard to round off corners too much with these because the stone will just break down on a, on a corner which you generally don't want to round off corners when you're polishing. Okay, looks pretty good. I'm going to turn this and finish it up. Nicely formed beads and details is a sign of good polishing. I'm not having a lot of scratches around them. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now the little little small bead on each side, or the one in the middle, I'm gonna try to hit a little bit. It doesn't need that much, but I'm just gonna try to hit a little bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So stones can be useful. Um, probably even a little more like on parts such as trigger guards, uh, ramrod pipes, things like that, or little stones can be very helpful. It's a good idea to try to clean off some of the, the grit left by your polishing. My shirt ends up being my rag half the time. So I mentioned using other materials to kind of bring the finish down a little further. scotch Bright is one of them. Um, Mirka makes a real nice product as well. Um, that one's been used a little bit before, so I'll get a fresh piece. I like the maroon. It's a, a woven abrasive. I don't know what the grit of this would be, but it's a little finer than 320, probably 400 or something. So I'm going to buff it a little bit, and it's going to even out the finish. Make it look a little, little, little more even and bring the finish down a little bit. You can already see the improvement. Okay. 
Now it's gonna, it's gonna probably dull or, or I should say um, soften these corners that I filed just a, a little bit. Not the end of the world, that's okay. It's not that aggressive where it's not gonna remove a whole lot of material. Maybe a little bit, but not that much. And a little bit of softening of those corners is just fine. Get it up here in the bead. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. I see one particular area at the front of the bead that needs a little more work. So I'm gonna hit that a little more with a stone and see if I can just clean it up a little more. Looks a little better. So after we've done this, and I'm not getting carried away with this, I'm just getting a little bit. The next step I usually do is, it looks good. It could use a little more, more of a high, a little more shine. So I'm gonna, I've got some 400 grit is what it is. I sometimes use 600 grit too. It's called, uh, it's a silicon carbide uh, abrasive that's in a, a grease, clover leaf. Some of you've probably heard about it or used it before. It breaks down pretty fast. Um, so it'll form, the, the 400 grit becomes finer as you use it a little bit. And I'm gonna make myself a mess here, but that's okay. I have a little piece of gray scotch bright that's all used, that I've dipped in it. And so I'm gonna take it and kind of rub it a little bit on the surface. And usually I don't use this much. Or, usually it's not this messy, but what this will do is it'll just bring the finish down just a tiny little bit. And, It'll look good. I'll do this without making a disaster of a mess. Tends just to even things out and just make them look a little nicer. Okay, we're gonna call that good enough, I think. So I've got a mess here, so I'm gonna have to step aside and wipe off my hands and wipe off the, uh, the parts. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. And you can see the results of the butt plate. Not a perfect finish, but it's a pretty nice finish. If we wanted a little more shine, I might hit it with a little bit of rotten stone or um, very fine pumice, and uh, we can get a little bit more shine out of it. But for most guns that I put together, this will be fine. I generally put a little patina on the parts too, so that um, causes a little variation in how it looks and interest to the part, it shows up the details a little more. So, um, and that kind of, uh, obscures any defects or scratches to some degree too, or makes them less less apparent. So there's a few little, little polishing marks that I may hit a, hit again here, but it's, it looks generally looks pretty good. So the next step would be go on to your other parts. Go on to your trigger guard in the ramrod pipes, the other brass parts. <clears throat> a trigger guard can be a little bit of a challenge to hold. Let me see if I can find one here pulling off the rack and we can talk about that. You can hold a trigger guard in the stock and do a lot of the polishing. So if, the, if it's in the stock, it's basically being held here and you know your, your stock is in the vise and you can get a lot of these surfaces just while it's in the stock. Nothing wrong with that, works very well. You can also be a little creative in how you clamp the part up in the vise. You can sometimes shim it a little bit, use leather, wrap leather around it and squeeze it and hold it and pinch it and File all these surfaces, you know, these little facets and flats all over it need to be, need to be addressed and filed. And uh, basically go about the same procedure we used on the butt plate. Same thing goes with the, with the, the ramrod pipes and, and side plate as well. The side plate's pretty fine since it's machined, but there are some real fine machine marks that need removed. Um, so that's a quick summary of polishing brass parts. Hope it helps and 
we'll uh, probably go on to maybe doing some work on finishing steel parts in the next video. Thanks.